Atheist Nomads, episode 127, interview with Robert Ray. The podcast you're about to listen to includes cursing and talking about hoo-hahs. Please be advised. We are the Atheist Nomads, bringing you history, science, politics, religion, and interviews with leaders in the atheist community. Not all those who wander are lost. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. I am Dustin. Joining me as always is Wesley. Hello, everybody. And joining us again is Robert Ray. Hi, everyone. Holy shit, it's been a while, man. Yeah. Yeah. We last had you on episode 34. 34. Wow. And you guys are on 127, you said? 127. Almost 100. Whoa. That's a long time. I didn't think we'd, I didn't think we'd still be doing this. <laughs> and if we've been counting episodes, you know, doing the episodes the way we are now with uh, interviews and news on separate episodes, uh, we'd be up at like 170, 180 by now. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, well, yeah, that was we uh, doing crazy two hour shows. That was September 2013. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah. So since then, you have uh, gotten even busier. Yeah, I, I was busy then. <laughs> so now I did you have a stroke that- or something to <laughs> cause you to to lose sense of <laughs> preserving time and sanity? I, I don't. No, no. I I have a a passion to a get passion. Uh, a passion for secular activism. So that's what I do. All right, and- all around the state, <laughs> and now kind of nationwide. <laughs> Still working a, a full time uh, day job. Yes, I am. Damn. Yeah, you're crazy. Yeah, yeah I am. I'm insane. <laughs> and you have kids. Well, and I have kids. Just sometimes when I'm not stuck in my office. <laughs> <laughs> you go, boy. Wow. So our, our listeners know uh, we will be talking about all of the things that Robert is doing. Sure. Um, so right. uh, let's start off with uh, the uh, bit about original you. motto campaign. Okay. So, yeah, we can start there. Yeah. So. So the original motto project is a uh, organization whose goal is to replace in God we trust with E pluribus unum as our founders intended. So um, we came up with the idea because E pluribus unum is on the great seal, which was created in 1782, long before the concept of in God we trust was ever thought of. Well, before the concept of actually having a motto was really even right. there. Right. So they didn't even have the motto at the time. It was sort of and it had been until 1956, the uh, de facto motto of the United States. Everybody just kind of considered e probus unum what we were, which mm-hmm. is Latin for out of many one or from many one, whichever way you wish to translate it. Yeah. And that seemed to work pretty well. It did. Um, you know, everybody seemed to like it uh, until mm, 1861. And there was a, a, a drive by a pastor to get in God We Trust on coinage, uh, which he succeeded. The Secretary of Treasury, Chase, uh, agreed with him and petitioned Congress and in 1864, got it approved, and that's when it first went on Went on the first two-cent coin. Yep. 1864 is when it first showed up. And most people don't realize where it comes from. It comes from the um, fourth stanza of the Star Spangled Banner, which uh, basically says, uh, In God is our trust. And during the deliberations in Congress, they changed it in God we trust. So that's how we mm. get that. Okay. And then, so that that's a little bit of history. I've got a lot more on the website. And in the the time frame, then uh, we had yeah you know, the Civil War going on, and right. it was generally believed by most people that the South had morally superior leadership. Their Correct. commanders were better. Their elected officials were good Christians. And the people running the North were mostly these relatively godless deists and right. Unitarians and kind of sketchy figures. Right. Well, what's interesting is even the Confederate Constitution mentioned God directly. I, mean, I don't have that quote in front of me, but I know it's in there. Yeah. But it was um, the Union that decided to put in God we trust on the currency, which I find very interesting. Yeah, uh, they probably tried to trying to play a little bit of catch up. Try to oh, yeah. play catch up and, and try to, to uh like, hey, we're not that bad. <laughs> win some, some moral points with European nations. Possibly. I mean, yeah, it, it could have been that, but mostly it was this pastor who wanted 
the the union to recognize that uh, morality comes from God, and that's what they were fighting for. So that's that's really it's yeah. in his letter, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I've read that. So, uh, wow, <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's just silly, right there. Yeah, that's that's way back in 1861. So, all right, so he got it on the coins, right? Um, and then it was on the coins off and on for the next um, nearly a hundred years. Well, until 1830, 1937, when it went on all coins. Um, so the the uh, Indian head nickel was the last one, last coin without it, which was the last one they printed was obviously 18, 1937. And then the uh, McCarthy era set in, which changed everything. Mm -hmm. So we got under God inserted into the pledge in 54. Uh, the motto was changed in 56, and then they decided to stick it on money in 56. And 1957 was the first time they printed it on a paper currency. Yeah, yeah, and then again, like with the Civil War, it ended up being this trying to paint the uh, the U.S. as the moral side in, in the struggle. Yeah, in the Cold War against the godless, godless communist. That was actually language that was used during the debates. So. Yeah. <laughs> Oddly enough. Well, and so, yeah. McCarthy was going after atheists as if they were communists anyway. Well, because, you know, that's just the way that they saw it then. That <laughs> since communism was basically atheistic, then all atheists must be communists, right? You know? mm -hmm. it makes sense. Yeah. Sure, sure. Hey, honestly, I believed that in uh, until 2008. Right. When I realized I was an atheist and was shocked that I could be an atheist and not a communist. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, we can. Uh huh. Oh yeah, yeah. It, 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 I had that moment of shock, and was like, "Oh, that's not true." <laughs> Skepticism. It's good for you. <laughs> oh yeah. So, um, yeah. Back to the original motto part of it, though. Okay. We uh, so e pluribus unum obviously has been around for a long time. So, like I said, since 1782, and in fact, it was um, suggested as far back as 1776 during the first uh, committee to create the Great Seal. Uh, that was Jefferson, Adams, and Franklin who suggested it. So nice, but but you know Congress didn't like the design of the seal, so it, it took two more committees, and then finally the uh, Secretary of Congress came up with the final design, which is very very similar to the one we see today, which has E pluribus unum on the scroll in the beak in the beak of the uh, eagle. So. So wait, you're you're saying that uh, basically they didn't pick up the motto then just because they didn't like the design of the seal, right? Okay. So nothing the, again, nothing against the motto. Just no, nothing. In fact, the other two seals that were suggested didn't have the motto, mm -hmm. and they didn't take those up either. Um, that's not really correlation causation, but right. It sure. when it finally came up when everything was laid out, they were like, yeah, because they approved it in like a couple hours. There was hardly any debate on the final version of it. <laughs> nice. Very, very, very interesting. Which is why we use the the concept as our founders intended it. Mm -hmm. Because once you put something on a seal, it kind of becomes your motto. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, especially if you don't have a explicit motto, right? Which at the time we did not, and it makes sense because later on we do become what is considered the mel melting pot. If you look at the late eighteen hundreds and the immigration, that's when we really got the the name melting pot. So, and it really, it, it speaks to what America really stands for because we are um, one nation out of 13 individual colonies that came together to fight a war. And that's what they were looking for right then. Mm -hmm. I'll take everybody but the Irish. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk bad on the Irish, man. Hey, I'm, I'm over half. Well, it's about what I am. <laughs> I've got a little bit of Irish. <laughs> I, I am mostly Scotch Irish. Okay. Irish, Polish, Italian, and Cherokee. Wow. Yeah, one of my uh, ancestral lines, uh, my maternal grandmother, virtually all of her ancestors were in the U.S. at the time of the the uh, Revolutionary War. That is cool. Man. Mostly, I, almost all had uh, their ancestors come from England, but there was a French Huguenot uh, family that had come through and I think one German family. Hmm. But yeah. all were American. Yeah. And Very the, way, the way I understand it. Basically, all of my family got here in 1903, except for my, you know, Cherokee side. Hmm. Well, I assume they were here well before 1903. <laughs> At least 20, 30 years earlier. <laughs> so back to uh, my project. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I guess you want to know the history of how it came to be 
and yes. what it does. So I'm going to start with a little bit of history first on the project okay. itself. Um, if you guys might remember Pierce County, Washington, uh, it was a year and a half ago. Was it a year and a half ago? About yeah. in Tacoma, last yeah. summer when they decided to put up in God We Trust, right? Mm -hmm. And a bunch of us went over and uh, Sam Mulvey and the Humanist of Washington got together and had the letter and got them convinced to do E Pluribus Unum as well, correct? Okay, yep. Right. And then, uh, what, about six months later, C Clark County, Washington did the same thing? Lovely. That's up closer mm -hmm. to your neck of the woods, isn't it? Uh, Clark County is actually way south. That, that's down yeah, by Vancouver. Oregon. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's okay. way south. It's oh, like shit. four hours from me. So they did the same thing. So we we did pretty much the same thing. This time we got with uh, the Portland humanist, since they're so close to Portland. And uh, we had a big, big rally against it. There were three meetings, and they eventually approved in God We Trust. Mm -hmm. So I thought to myself on the long drive home, I was like, there has got to be a way we can stop this. Because their biggest argument during that day was, you know, it's it's the motto, so there, you can't say anything about it, right? Which is technically true. I mean, we, there's yeah. only so much we can do. And courts have ruled that the motto is ceremonial deism. Right. The Ninth Circuit Court ruled that, which frustrates the hell out of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, so on the drive home, I was like, well, the only way to fix this is to change the motto. Then they don't have that excuse. They can't say that it's ceremonial deism anymore. They can't say that it's just the motto, so you can't say anything against it. So I, I kind of had this idea that I would use um, whitehouse.gov to at least get some attention, right? The, the petition. Mm -hmm. yep. And that basically got no traction at all. I think I got maybe a thousand signatures out of the hundred thousand necessary. And then uh, I was talking to Sam, Sam Mulvey of Asking Atheists about it. And he said something that sparked my creative juices, right? He said, what if you did something more locally? And I was like, that is perfect. I decided then that the best idea would be to find out where they're proposing in God We Trust on city and county council walls and offer to provide an E Pluribus Unum plaque to go with it. Hmm. So that's where this whole concept started. And that was back in March, March of this year. Okay. So. It, it's a lot easier to make progress at that level because even if you had gotten a response from the White House. It, it would have been meaningless. They can't change it. No, they can't. Well, the, the 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 petition was to ask Pres President Obama to ask Congress to change it, which should make them even less likely to do it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, I knew it was bound to fail, but I wanted <laughs> to get some. I I wanted to get some uh, some uh, a message out, right? Mm -hmm. To get at least some attention to it, and I figured if I could at least get President Obama to uh, talk about it, or you know, his office to at least give a response and we would have some place to go from there. Yeah. Then that failed miserably. So come on. Then, I mean, even if he did get, even if he did ask, I mean, come on, honestly, everybody knows he's like a, a godless Muslim or something. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> so yeah, as soon as he, they just communist. been all over him. Yeah. No oh, socialist, communist, fascist, something or other. Yeah. He is uh, every, every yeah. is possible. <laughs> yep. All of them, especially the contradictory ones. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So then um, from there, I, I started writing letters to city councils and things that I had discovered were going to consider it during their next meeting. And occasionally I would catch it far enough ahead where I could get some local action. I had a thing down in Florida that worked out in Venice, Venice, Florida. I was able to get about a week ahead. So there were people that knew about it and were able to go to the meetings and, and head them off. So Venice, Florida decided not to approve in God We Trust. But mostly nice. because they were afraid of lawsuits. Ah, well, oh, nice. Yeah. But it, wh whichever way you can get it, fuck it. Right. And at the time, I was like, yay, we got something. That's a plus. And then I had an issue in Del Norte County, California. Well, that was an interesting one. Uh, I found out about the meeting the night before. Oh. So I, yeah, the night before. There's not much I can do there. But I did fire off my emails and, you know, tell them I would like to propose the e pluribus unum. And the next morning, I got an email back from uh, one of the council members. And he was asking, you know, what was the purpose of the group and, you know, how have we done? And it turns out the guy that wrote me back was the guy who was proposing a God We Trust. He was trying to get information from me on it. Mm. You know, I was absolutely truthful with him. And then I was watching the, um, the meeting later that day because I also like to watch the meeting when, when I can, when they live stream. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, oh, damn, this guy's the guy that wrote me back. How pitiful is that? Right. <laughs> so so we, then after the meeting, like 15, 20 minutes after the meeting, he writes me back and he says, basically, hey, we approved in God we trust. And I hope you have no luck with your initiative. Well, that's real nice. Thanks. Wow. Yeah. Now, being the good citizen I am, I felt that citizens of Del Norte County should know what kind of council person they have elected. So I contacted a local newspaper to let them know what this guy was about. <laughs> and then um, a couple weeks later, so the, the reporter did a story on it, which was great. You know, he, I did a short interview and we talked about it. And it, so I was like, OK, I'm pretty much done with that because it's never going to go anywhere. Well, about three weeks later, that reporter wrote me back and said, hey, they're going to do E Pluribus Unum on the next meeting. I was like, really? Oh, nice. Yeah, so I watched the meeting and the uh, the council, uh, the commissioner, uh, I forgot what his title was, but the head commissioner basically mm-hmm. said that um, he was very upset that the E Pluribus Unum was not brought to his attention because I had sent it to all the counselors, but I didn't send it to this guy because I didn't know he was part of the council. Oh, right. And he said, had we seen, had he seen that first time, he would have proposed it then I'm like, damn it, I missed it. So that's a mistake I haven't made since. <laughs> but uh, he was very, very mad at the way um, this other counselor had talked to me. He said, that's not the way that we talk to the public. Nice. So that's very bit. nice, especially considering the fact that you're not a local. Right. I'm not a local. Yeah. Um, so wow. uh, that was technically our first win. We got E Pluribus Unum in Del Norte County, California. <laughs> And this was, oh, nice. uh, when was this? This was May, I think. It was right before I started the podcast. So, and then we've had wins in uh, Baldwin, Missouri, Irvine, California, and of course, Pierce County. We, we kind of count that from the team. That's because we were all, I was part of the entire movement. So the team and I said, well, we should probably consider that as a win as well. All right. I'm good with that. So far, yeah. we've had five city councils approve it out of the, 45 that I've contacted. <laughs> well, uh, so 40 have actually approved in God we trust or are they still uh, deliberate? Um, yeah, they have approved in God we trust. That's in addition to the 600 or more in the nation so far. All right. Now I'm wow. curious about my town. <laughs> no, um, no, you're not on the list. Bremerton? No. All right. No. Good. No, I have a, I have a list. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you checking it twice? Yes. In fact, I have someone that checks it for me (laughs) and his job is to email every single one of them. Yeah. So holy crap. That's quite the job. Form form letter is sent. Hope (laughs) you got a form letter somewhere. We do. We have a very nice form letter. (laughs) So yeah, that went along pretty well. And it was basically just me for several months doing that, which was fine because it wasn't a big deal. You know, it, it was once or twice a month I would run into a city council that was doing it sometimes three or four, but that was it. We're going to take a quick break and uh, then we'll hear about what you've been dealing with that's not city councils and county commission. Atheist Nomads is proudly brought to you by Archway Hosting. Check out their low price, full featured hosting solutions at archwayhosting.com. That's A-R-C-H-W-A-Y hosting.com. Hey, we're also brought to you by listeners just like you. Find out how you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash atheist nomads. That's P A T R E O N dot com forward slash atheist nomads. All right. So I understand you're dealing with groups that aren't just councils. Uh, that is correct. Um, generally, we try to deal with just government agencies, and we happen to run across a sheriff in Florida that decided to put In God We Trust on his vehicle's bumpers. And that was in, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm trying to remember the county. Um, I don't remember the county, but I do remember his name. He's Sheriff McKeithen. I remember his name quite well because I am now blocked from his Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> That's not petty at all, but okay. No. Well, I'm also blocked from the entire sheriff's Facebook page, which we'll get into that later. <laughs> so um, when I found out about that, you know, I, of course, notified the locals that, hey, this is going on. And I said, well, maybe I should offer him a sticker. So I designed a sticker real quick and had a few printed up and sent him the offer for the sticker, which he ignored, <laughs> like I somewhat expected him to. And then the the locals had a big, huge rally. It was um, huge for the area. There were like 25 locals against it. 
and a couple hundred locals for it. Right. That's And they showed up in opposition, which was really cool. Got a lot of news coverage, which mm-hmm. started this entire cascade effect of sheriffs and police departments and now fire departments putting a God we trust on government vehicles. Which, so we, to put this in, in, in context, those are people with the authority to arrest you correct. that have guns and badges and have an exclusionary message on and I should mention vehicles. that they're government employees. Yes. So that was one of the reasons we really were against this. I mean, in city and county councils, it's kind of, you know, it, it's, it's something that we just have to work against. But when it came to the, the police cars that, <laughs> um, dogs, when it came yes, to police cars, uh, we, we felt that that was a serious violation because now we have an authoritarian figure. Mm-hmm that has power over people uh, spreading a message of religious nature. So that when we decided to hit really hard and uh, yeah, we hit it pretty hard. And it's a lot harder to argue ceremonial deism on cop cars. Right. And especially <laughs> when you get a Facebook post from the sheriff's department saying we're religious here and we're going to put this on. Right. Ooh. <laughs> um, so we saw that a lot. So there were a couple in Florida and then uh, something happened in Missouri. There was a, um, the sheriff, Missouri Sheriff's Association had a vote in July and they decided that they should put it on all sheriff's cars in Missouri. Right. So now there are, oh, I forgot the number exactly, something like 50-ish in Missouri that have it on there. (laughs) It, It just, it took off like wildfire in Missouri, which led me to most of the team that I work with at the original model project. Now I, I picked up a content manager, uh, my outreach coordinator and my PR person out of Missouri. So sure. that that's how I built the team was by doing that. But then, uh, it just started taking off all over the country because the Washington post picked up on the one in one of the ones in Missouri, they picked up on that and then everybody else started seeing it. Then it started across Texas which we had a sheriff that decided that they would respond to the FFR, FFRF letter with a go fly a kite, right? So mm-hmm. that's fun. And then there was um, uh, one that just said no. He wasn't going to take him off, <laughs> right? So that was his basic response, no. And then my favorite came out of Texas, and it was a guy who said go butt a stump. That's what he said. Butt a stump. Yeah. I looked it up on Urban Dictionary. It's basically go fuck yourself. Huh. All right. That's okay. Great. Awesome. Well, I guess you have to give the, uh, give that sheriff's department some, some, uh, kudos for being up on the the latest language. Well, that's an old one, by the way. Oh, it is. It's, it's old. I don't think, because I asked around, I was like, Hey, anybody know what this means? Nobody younger than me knew it. And uh, I went over there and it's, Oh man, that's what it means. Okay. (laughs) I even asked people who lived in Texas. Like I've never heard that. Oh, damn. (laughs) Good. So that's yeah. that's kind of where we're sitting. I've got 182 sheriff's offices across the nation, and they go as far north as Idaho. It was a uh, Benoit County, Idaho. Yeah, I saw you post that one on Facebook, and yeah. I looked up where that is. And yeah, it's up by Coeur d'Alene. Yeah. Oh, great! Up in the neck. That part of Idaho. If I said anything to them, they'd say "fuck you, Boise." <laughs> Pretty much. I lived there for a couple of years. So, so yeah, you know, I, I, I know how Coeur d'Alene is. Yes, it's it's the south of the north. It's the it's south kind of... of Idaho, which is the south <laughs> of the northwest. <laughs> yeah, so that's like the the Mississippi of the northwest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> the Bayou. Yeah, that's way down there. Anyway, very interesting. Uh, so that's kind of where we sit now. We, you know, every every couple days i get a notification that a new sheriff department new police department or a new city is considering in god we trust so we go through our processes which is sending letters notifying locals and now we have a a new tool we decided to start using facebook heavily uh we in fact created 50 groups one for each state actually 51 groups one for each state and one for the nation Hmm. so we could get the news out to the people in that area instead of you know broadcasting it everywhere and then maybe people might see it so it was we thought it was a great idea to do that. Hmm, so, not bad, not bad. Yeah. And then locals can get involved because that's really where we need to be at is local involvement. Because a lot of the sheriffs are saying, you know, we're not getting any negative feedback on this. 
when in fact they are, mm -hmm. right? But then that's where, when I said earlier, we'll get into that later. This is where yeah. that later comes in. They are getting a lot of negative feedback. However, they are deleting a lot of negative feedback. Mm. Ooh. Yeah. And these are government agencies, uh, government, official government pages. Yeah. Which we are, I've talked to a couple legal people and we are considering, they are considered the same as an open public forum as in, um, if you were to go to the council meetings, basically them deleting your comments is like them taking away your microphone. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's um, unconstitutional. It's a violation of your First Amendment rights to uh, openly address your government. Mm -hmm. In fact, I have contacted the AHA and we are working on a process to go through all that. American Humanist Association? Yeah. Awesome. A process you'd have, sounds like you'd have to go through hundreds of times. Yeah. So <laughs> I've got... I am currently banned off of four sheriff departments, <laughs> a, a police department, and a council member, two council members in Springfield, Missouri. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. This does make me laugh. Yeah, I know. Well, what's sad is, you know, I understand if you're banned for being vulgar, right? Or for being sure. threatening. Sure. But anybody who knows me uh, knows that I am not vulgar, generally. You're a fucking teddy bear. I am. You are. Um, uh, the first time I, I first time my team heard me cuss anything, we're like, oh, my God, Robert said the F word. So, <laughs> and Robert, could you say that now just so we actually earn the explicit tag? Oh, <laughs> I said that earlier. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. Did I didn't yeah. hear it. I yeah, when I said go I didn't either. So oh, yeah, mean, yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah. But, okay. you know, I can say it again just to have fun. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. It's so cute. Anyways, um, where was I? <laughs> you confuse me with with foul language. Oh, sorry. Um, oh, you don't you don't talk like that on these pages. Yeah, I don't talk like that on any, these pages because if I were, I would lose my credibility. Right. Mm -hmm, the, sure. the entire model project would lose any ounce of um, decency on these pages. So I, I don't do that. So there's no reason really to delete our comments and ban me. And it usually goes like this: they will ban the original model project. Right. And then I'll go back as a person in my regular Facebook account and tell them that they can't do that, that that's a violation of the Constitution. And I get banned that way. <laughs> yeah. Man. Hope so. you're screenshot and all this shit. Oh, yeah. I have an entire huge file of screenshots. When it first started happening, um, everybody just started sending me screenshots. Say, hey, this is happening. And I, I got like hundreds of them. <laughs> It's like, holy crap, we have a big issue here. So that's when I started researching that. And I was like, there was actually a um, police department in Hawaii uh, back in 2012 that settled for $31,000 for this exact same issue because they didn't <laughs> want to take it to court because they knew they would lose. So they settled out of court. No oh, shit. Sure. Uh, yeah. Man, I'm going to have to try this. What's funny is the day that I contacted the AHA, um, I got banned by another sheriff department. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? So, so that's and where we sit now. We, uh, this is what we do. It sounds like a great way to make money. You should be like able to fund all this shit really quick. Well, yeah, I'm not in it for the money. No, but you know what? Can't hurt. No, it can't hurt. I would love to have more money for the project. Absolutely. Excellent. I mean, we're, we're scraping by. Yeah. We're basically self-funded with, with occasional donations. And our um, Stamp It Out program has helped a little bit. We love hearing from our listeners. You can email us at contact at atheistnomads.com, tweet us at atheistnomads, send us a message on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash atheistnomads, or better yet, call us and leave us a message at 541-203-0666. We might even play it on the show. You can also help us out by leaving us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcast directory of choice. Tell us about that. Oh, yeah. Stamp it out. So as everybody knows, in God We Trust is on money, on currency, right? Mm -hmm. So we decided that maybe we should devise a way for people to uh, cross that out, right? Of course, you can use a Sharpie. That's fine. But we wanted to put a message on there. So we came up with a stamp, which says, E pluribus unum, a federal endorsement of a deity or religion violates the U.S. Constitution, which fits very neatly over in God We Trust. 
it was designed to go over it on the dollar bill. It's a little different on the 20 and the larger bills, but that's basically what it is. So I'd seen other stamps like this online, but my biggest issue with those was they were big stamps, you know, full clunker stamps, right? So I did some research and I found one that will fit in your pocket. Oh. And so that's the one we use. Pretty cool. Yeah, it folds up in itself. It's um, it's about three inches, three, four inches tall, about an inch and a half wide. So, yeah, it definitely fits in your pocket. Hmm, not bad, not bad. Yeah. Sounds like that old uh, thing for uh, Where's George? Yeah. You. No, yeah, and we use, yeah, same thing. Um, and one of the biggest issues that came up right after we decided to do that were people were saying it's illegal to deface money. No, it's not. No, it's not. In fact, if it were illegal to deface money, we would not be doing this. And I, I've been over that many, many times. You also wouldn't have those machines to stamp pennies. Right. Well, yeah. that's the weirdest thing about the pennies, because you're basically taking them out of circulation when you when you do that to them, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. technically, if you go by the statute, is illegal. Oh, <laughs> yeah. OK. Yeah, because you're not allowed to deface it in such a way that it becomes um, no longer legal tender. So when you crush down a penny in that way and put the buffalo on it, it no longer is a penny. <laughs> All right. Which that actually makes sense, especially in the case of the penny, since it costs 1.7 cents Seth. to make a penny. <laughs> right. But and it really comes down to intent. If you look at the statute, it comes down to what you intend to do with it. If your intent is to take it out of circulation, then, yeah, that's illegal. However, if your intent is to use it for political dissent, that is not illegal, which is how we use it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, another thing that is um, in the statute is uh, you're not supposed to use it as advertisement, which is why we don't have our website on there. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, as much as I would Smart. want to. But I'm uh, guessing that anybody that, you know, looks it up would be able to find you pretty quick. Um, yeah, because that I made sure that ePluribus Unum is in every single meta tag on our site. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah. So that's that's that. Um, we're just moving on. We're trying this year to get a billboard up, probably somewhere in Missouri. We're not sure exactly what that's going to say yet. Uh, we are also trying to get um, into ReasonCon, I think it is, the one in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, anywhere else we can get in. Reason The reason we're looking at ReasonCon is because I've got three people within an hour's drive of St. Louis, so they can all go, and I don't have to foot the bill to put myself in places. So that makes sense. Or if you awesome. get one, one generous donor, you know, you could go down there and sleep on somebody's couch. That would be nice. But we'll see how it goes. And, um, you know, we have a Twitter account, which I generally troll in God we trust people with. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, one of my Twitter searches is in God we trust in quotes. And, you know, I'll go correct people on their stupidity. <laughs> and then we, we, of course, have a Facebook page and the groups. And then the, the website is originalmotto.us. Yeah. I, I like to kind of play on that because it's United States plus us kind of fit in right so mm -hmm. that's why i decided on that domain and that's pretty much the project which is so really I, cool i hear yeah. we have some uh, mutual friends in the satanists yeah and uh that i think they're trying to get involved with clark county coming up pretty quick yeah yeah so um i've been talking with lilith from the seattle temple mm -hmm. and we are working on a concept to get clark county to approve e pluribus unum in fact some of the artwork on our sites comes from the uh, the Satanic Temple's rendition of E Pluribus Unum plaque, nice. and you know I'm using that with permission, so mm -hmm. which is cool. Hopefully, something goes really well down there. Um, I'm hoping for at least some news coverage with the Satanic oh. Temple. That's almost guaranteed. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and I wherever would love, they go, yeah, wherever they go, the news follows. And I would love if we could get E Pluribus Unum in there with the news coverage. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed on that one. And just let's hope there's not a bunch of high school high school kids with bottles of water and rocks and shit. <laughs> yeah. That would not be much fun. <laughs> yeah. Throwing that holy water on us, that might burn. I don't know. Uh, or we might just get wet and yeah, it's possible. Burnt, bruised. Shit. Yeah. We'll see. But yeah, that's that's pretty much what we do over there, which has taken up a great deal of my time. So as you can imagine trying to keep up with all that yeah that can i that would take up a lot of time there's a lot yeah. of uh 
because it seems like yeah like you've you've said there's a couple of of uh mostly law enforcement offices doing that every week mm-hmm. seems like there's a city or county doing it every pretty month. close to yeah monthly yeah. at least yeah so yeah it's luckily cities and counties they have either by what was it bi-weekly meetings so there's there's a gap in there for me to catch up on city and county mm-hmm. stuff but sheriffs it just comes out of the blue i'm like whoa there's another one. So where did this all come from in the first place? So in 2002, a woman by the name of Jackie Sullivan in Bakersfield, California, decided it would be a great idea to have the city council that she sits on approve In God We Trust as a plaque. And she got it. And then two years later, she created In God We Trust America Incorporated, which <laughs> is now the catalyst for pretty much all of this. Mm. With the exception of North Carolina. North Carolina has its own group, which is, uh, I forgot the name of theirs. It has to do with the motto. Anyway, it's basically another version of In God We Trust America. Uh, it, and they've gotten 60 counties and cities in North Carolina on their own. And then uh, the In God We Trust America is well over 500. Yeah, that's why you don't give women rights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So mailed. Hate mail too. Yeah, Dustin. <laughs> that was <And> Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had a couple interactions with someone I believe to be Jackie Sullivan. No, uh, sure. we didn't. We did not get along well on Facebook. Uh-huh. So yeah. Well, come on, it's a fucking company. I'm sure she's making money. Um, from what I understand, uh, she is basically uh, running that thing on her own. But there's no way she could be doing that. They made that she's getting donations. If Oh yeah. She's getting huge donations. You know, yeah. uh, I think she made, well, in, in comparison to what I do, she made in the tens of thousands for one uh, event last year. So yeah, wow. I don't get anywhere near that much. Uh, she had, uh, she had someone big speaking, uh, general West, I think was his name. Oh, great. Yeah. No, uh, at, at this year's conference, they had the in God we trust conference basically. I think that was his name. I'm trying to remember his name. Been a while, but yeah, that's that. That group's frustrating as hell. <laughs> um, one of the, I, I said, I remember one of the conversations I had was, you know, show me where in the Constitution it says God, Jesus, you know, Christianity, anything, and she pointed to the date, which says in the year of our Lord, and she's like, what Lord do you think they're talking about? Like, You've got to be kidding me if you're using that. I mean, that, that's the common way of dating thing in 1776. Mm-hmm. That's like saying Thursday. So obviously Thor, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, I sure. was just, I was livid. And I, I said, I am done with this conversation. I can't have a conversation with someone who thinks in that manner. I'm done. So I, I haven't spoken. I haven't done anything there since because I just can't. Yeah, I was well, angry. Especially <laughs> since if you, you look at like the way we address Christian countries and treaties at that time period. Right. We knew how to refer to governments in religious terms. Right. And did not use that to describe our own. Right. Ever. Right. There, there's no mention of it anywhere in the Constitution. There, nowhere in the Bill of Rights. Um, and if you look at the historical uh, information, they did not want a religious nation. I mean, mm-hmm. it's fairly obvious. Even if you go as far back as Declaration of Independence, it's very vague religious language. I mean, you have words like creator and nature's God. Those are very vague. Um, They're uh, deistic terms. Right. They are deistic terms. That's uh, it's just frustrating when I get into those arguments with people and they just, they, they can't, I can't get it into their head what I'm trying to say. They're just like, oh, they're talking about Jesus all the time. Like, no, they're not talking about Jesus. <laughs> Fuck, I mean, Jefferson ripped up the Bible to make his own version. Exactly. And add all the crazy shit. Yeah, it's 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 very frustrating, which is why I'm glad I do have a, a team now that I can go to and, and vent with, because <laughs> they, they see the same things. Right? We all do pretty much the same stuff, so it, it gets crazy out there sometimes. You know, I'm out there in the trenches. Wow. Okay. All right, let's uh, take another quick break, and then we'll be back with... More of what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> if you like the show, consider giving us some financial support. We make it really easy with one-time donations or to support us on a per episode, monthly, or even annual basis using PayPal or Patreon. 
Find out more at atheistnomads.com. Use the links on the right side of the page. One dollar an episode is all we ask. Please think of the kittens. So, local groups, uh, are you still active with those? Yes, I am. Um, I'm still president of Humanist in North Puget Sound. I am now the president of the Secular Humanist of Everett. I still sit on the board for the Humanist of Washington, and I interact a lot with uh, Seattle Atheists, well, as much as I can. So, that's kind of what I do. Four groups, that's that's a lot to keep uh, yeah. active well, with. <laughs> yeah, luckily our groups aren't heavily active right now. We've had a downturn in membership. Hmm. Uh, it, it's the way things go in, in these situations, so. I'm not too concerned. I have a feeling we're going to, we've been slowly rising back up. It was kind of this weird time here in the Puget Sound where nobody really wanted to get overly involved. Still kind of that way. So very interesting. Well, that a lot of our older members stopped showing up because, you know, they got old. (laughs) Okay, whatever. (laughs) That's, as I understand it, that's something that happens in a lot of humanist groups. Right. Yeah. Our founding members, um, I think one is still alive, but she doesn't show up anymore because she's going on 90. So, Fuck. Yeah. And wow. she showed up until about two years ago. And then, you know, I talked to her son and she just, it, she just can't do it. She just can't get up and, and go to the meetings, which, you know, the fact that she came till she was that old. Yeah, I'm good with that. The humanist groups. I mean, a lot of them formed in the 70s, wasn't it? Yeah. And so they, were, of, they were already kind of old people then. Yeah. So the Humanist North Puget Sound formed in 1991 and everybody that formed it then had already basically retired or nearly retired just to let you know their age. (laughs) So they were in their upper fifties and early sixties then. (laughs) So, yeah, I remember hearing about humanist groups. I mean, that's like way before atheist groups came out, but yeah, I think they got popular in the seventies and eighties and yeah. Yeah. But they were already old and retired people then. Right. So, so that that's kind of what the humanist groups up here are going through, uh, trying to attract younger members, but they just don't seem as interested in uh, the humanist groups. Mm-hmm. So it, it's an interesting thing um, when, when we look at the demographics of that. They tend to, uh, I, I've actually noticed that they want more of a social situation than a um, activist situation, which is difficult for me to deal with because I'm not exactly a social person. I'm an activist, which may be part of our downturn in membership. So that, that's so you got to be open to everybody, which I try to be. It's somewhat difficult for me. Yeah, and it's you've yeah you know, different humanist groups have have a different uh, feel in those regards as well. Right. You know, some tend to be more uh, charitable and more advocates than activists. Right. Um. Like the, the humanist of Idaho, I would describe more in those terms. And that also tends to work better with an older crowd. Right. People that have the time to do with, deal with that stuff. Mm-hmm. People who aren't uh, dealing with young children or college and things like that. So it, it makes a difference when your demographics are that way. Yeah. Whereas like what? Idaho atheists, is, they get together and drink. Right. Yeah. That, that's what my, my groups are, just purely private social groups. Right. And what's interesting is I've tried that a few times and um, none of the older members want to go for it. So I end up with these basically two different groups that I'm trying to pull together. (laughs) And it's really, really hard because the the older people don't want to get together and and talk over drinks. They want to do something. Oh, man, you guys are killing me. (laughs) Yeah. In the the Treasure Valley, we have, I would say, really four strong groups. One is mostly a, a younger crowd that wants to get together and drink. One's more of a middle-aged crowd that wants to get together and talk. Then you've got the Humanists of Idaho with the older crowd. And then Cosmos Coffee Club with people that just want to talk science. Right. That's, yeah. Each of those work well, but you try to mash them all together, it's not going to work. Right. That's kind of what I've run into here. Because I've seriously tried to mash them all together for a couple years now. And, you know, one of these days I'm going to realize it's probably not going to work that well. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> now, either groups will have to change as their core membership changes, or like in the case of a lot of humanist groups, uh, die. Right. Or people will just kind of graduate through the different groups. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm hoping for. 
if I stick with it long enough, I'll build, you know, the two or three separate groups and, you know, I can just move them through because I, I don't mind doing all of those things. You know, like I said, I'm not heavily social, but I'll sit around and talk. Um, so it's just difficult for me to find the time to do all of that. Okay. Yeah. Especially with the, uh, original motto project. Oh yeah. Yeah. That sounds that, like that a full time job. It almost is sometimes. I mean, I've been on vacation the past couple of weeks and I've not really been on vacation. <laughs> Which, much to my wife's dismay. Yeah. So is that why uh, you're doing a podcast with her? Um, kind of. For some well, time together? Yeah, sort <laughs> of. Well, that's an interesting story to the podcast. Um, originally, my idea was to have a podcast for the original model project, right? Where mm-hmm. I was going to talk about In God We Trust News and E Pluribus Lunum News. And um, I, I plan on putting it out Sunday nights. And for the first episode, I, I told Amy on like Saturday, I'm like, hey, I'm doing a podcast in, in the office. You know, and she's like, okay. And she, Sunday afternoon, she comes and says, so what's this podcast about? And I told her what it is. And she's like, you're going to fail. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So she's like, you're, you're seriously, you're too boring. It's a boring subject. No one's going to want to <laughs> listen. Like, okay. You're so nice. And she's like, okay, I will do your podcast with you. Because what had been interesting is I had talked like the year before. I was like, hey, we need to do a podcast because all we do is talk in the car. And I said, I should make sound rig for the car and record that. Right? <laughs> like, that would be cool, except all the road noise. I'm like, uh-huh. that sucks. And then so I said, when she came in and said she'll do the podcast with me, I said, hey, so what about that idea I had last year about us talking about stuff in the car, only we bring it into the, the studio? She's like, well, that's a good idea. So what are we going to call it? I was like, well, we yak at each other, so we can call it secular yakking, which is what we called it. Okay. And then um, just kind of took off from there. So we, we decided to do, uh, I took about two hours, rewrote the entire show to be uh, more uh, secular news instead of just in God We Trust News. So first episode's kind of wonky because it was written in two hours. <laughs> Man, that's that's like two hours more prep than what, than what we have, <laughs> or at least than I have. Yeah. yeah. Um, and on that first episode, we came up with an idea that I had originally planned for the In God We Trust was to highlight some political person who's, you know, basically acting like a jerk. And I called it the Mr. Potter Award, which has its own history of interest, which mm-hmm. stems back to Clark County. One of the Clark County counselors was very smug. It was actually the guy who um, proposed In God We Trust. And he kind of looks like Mr. Potter from It's a Wonderful Life. If you know that movie, mm-hmm. uh, Lionel yeah. Barrymore played him. And I told Amy, I was like, that guy looks like Mr. Potter. kind of acts like him too, right? And then, you know, months later, I ran into the guy from Del Norte, California. I said, that guy's really like a Potter guy. <laughs> and that was that was the beginning of the Mr. Potter Award. <laughs> so That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so... Uh, Sorry, I, I thought you were going for Sherman Teeter. No, no. Wrong Potter. No, he would have a different award. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I like the movie. I, we watch it every year for the holidays, and it, it's a great movie, I think. It's not like the greatest movie, but, you know, it's got a great message. So we decided to stick with the Mr. Potter Award, so I go out and actively look for a government official that's being an ass. <laughs> and, you know, dig into their their past and see what they've done that would qualify them to be a serious ass. And usually I come up with some pretty good stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's amazing how much dirt elected officials tend to have. And they don't even realize it's out there. Yeah. That's the funny part. Um, I ran into uh, a sheriff in oh, Texas. It's the same one that said, go butt a stump, right? Uh, he used uh, government resources to save his furniture during a flood. Oh. Yeah, he sent out deputies to his house because his wife called 911 because their furniture was about to get wet. Right. And then when the, here's, here's the worst part. When that deputy got stuck, he sent out jail employees to get the deputy unstuck and go help with the furniture. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so I was like, this guy's, yeah, this guy's a Potter Award winner right there. That's all I need. So I usually look for three or four things that they've done. Uh, just, you know, that that's fun doing that. Um, yeah. And then a couple months ago, I was like, man, we got to get some positive news on here. So I came up with the George Bailey Award, which is the exact opposite. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, it's generally a political figure, but it doesn't have to be of someone giving of themselves selflessly to help others. And so I try to do one of those once a month. Nice. Yeah. And uh, are you still releasing on Sundays? Um, yeah, we release. Well, I, I my plan is to have the finished product out by 9 a.m. Monday morning because we used to record live at 9 a.m. until I discovered my Internet is crap and I can't record live or I can't broadcast live. Uh, we we did it a couple. Oh God, we did it for like 13 or 14 episodes. And then we had one episode where my Internet completely dropped in the middle of broadcast. <laughs> oh. I was so pissed. Luckily, you know, I'd, I'd learned from previous experience to make sure I record everything because I did lose half an episode once. And um, so I try to get all the episodes out uh, for regular listeners by 9 a.m. Monday morning on Podbean and for patron subscribers Sunday night by 9 p.m. is when we try to get that out. Okay. Not too bad. Yeah, this week um, will be a little different. I've got a thing going on at work, which means I won't be able to record Sunday night. So we are recording early, which means a really early release. <laughs> Cool. So, yeah, I'm looking at probably Wednesday night recording because I have a huge thing going on at work this week, which means no time at all for anything. <laughs> so really early. Yeah. Four days early. But yeah. We, we talk about all sorts of secular stuff. We try to get some science in there when we can um, try to keep it uh, lighthearted and funny as possible. You know, I, I don't have a serious sense of humor. So Amy kind of picks up on that and takes care of the sense of humor stuff. Um, occasionally I do like to surprise her with a story that she hasn't seen anything about. And that makes for a good, good show. Sometimes just her reaction is funny, but yeah, that's that uh, we actually, we really enjoy it now. Um, it took some prodding to get her to do the podcast, but now she really likes doing it. Badass. Yeah. And, uh, we recently, um, joined the secular outreach network, which is a, a group of podcasters that, um, that we, we want to combine our efforts to to reach more people and create a community around what we do, okay. which um, which has Atheism 101, Waiting for Wrath in the Name of God, the podcast, uh, the Q in the uh, Atheist Apocalypse, mm -hmm. which you guys have had Paul on, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 He rebranded the other show, which we, we won't talk about, um, to the Q, which is kind of cool. It, it's totally different from his previous show. I've been on Waiting for Wrath. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, I, I listened to that episode too. That was a good one. Yeah, it was interesting getting to see the uh, behind the scenes on on them. They really like drinking while recording. Oh, yeah. Yes, they do. <laughs> and they are willing to put in the time editing to fix oh. that. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they spend a lot of time editing. I, I don't have that kind of time, so I don't drink much on the show. In fact, when I record our show, I... I record it as if it were live yep. and I only edit out really annoying stuff like the dog barking or, you know, something fell over. Yeah. We uh, record pretty close to as if it was live. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Waiting for wrath. It was three and a half. I think it was three and a half hours of recording. Yeah. And they said they were going to be spending probably about 18 hours editing. Yeah. That's, that's a bit much for me, but how long is your know, show? An hour um, show. Yeah, it's wow. a little over an hour. Yeah. It, what That's was scary. funny was how much of those three hours was spent talking about how much editing they were going to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> now, of well, course, yeah, when it's podcasters talking to podcasters, uh, discussions do tend to go talking shop. that direction. Yeah, talking of shop. Course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, you know, I just, I listen to, to the shows. And I like them. So I'm good with it. Nice. Whatever it takes them to edit it to make it sound good, mm -hmm. that's their thing. You know, if it takes them 20 hours, I'm, I'm good with it because it's still, it sounds pretty good with an end product. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They do, uh, they do put out a nice end product. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm listening yeah. to their Christmas episode right now and uh, they are quite drunk. <laughs> that's a lot of beer. <laughs> that is a lot of beer. That's wow. I, 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 I don't drink that much in a year. <laughs> In fact, we just introduced vodka to the show a couple of weeks ago. Oh. Yeah. Uh, before, we'd been uh, either on coffee or uh, once we tried wine and that didn't work out so well. Um, but just a little insight on the show. That night we recorded a podcast and I got into editing. I'm like, oh, this sounds like crap. It's so flat and boring. Right. And 
I, I went to Amy. I said, here, listen. And she's like, oh, this is horrible. We can't put this out. So we was like, well, let's throw some vodka in and see what happens. So we redid the show with vodka. <laughs> and it sounded way better. Oh, man. our It was the you, second time we recorded. Uh, it, yeah, that, that never went anywhere. We, we tried again the next day. Uh, we were both drinking. I had had more than I typically do when recording. And, uh, Wesley had had a decent amount as well. And, oh, it was bad. We got to the (laughs) the end and it was like, nope, this isn't going anywhere ever. Well, we learned learned my lesson. I I stick to like energy drinks, NOS. Well, we'd had, you know, one heavily vodka screwdriver each and that was pretty much it but for me for someone who doesn't drink often i was you know a bit lightheaded you know a little funnier (laughs) yeah (laughs) oh well Well, yeah probably won't happen that often but if we talk about too much alcohol that means we had a bad (laughs) 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 pre-recording and that's uh that's it i mean we're up to 34 episodes now i've been doing it since may and we do put it out weekly, so it's there. Nice. That's at, that's at secularyacking.com. All right. And where can we find all of the rest of your many multitude of projects? Okay. So we've got humanistnps.org. That's the Humanist of New North Puget Sound. Um, the Secular Humanist of Everett is still on Meetup. I'm redoing their website, but that's time consuming. So uh, mm-hmm. eventually that will be up. Um, Humanist of Washington uh it's which one is i don't remember their website wow that's crazy um then of course original model i have i have the 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 stuff to find that okay yeah i, I just don't have it in front of me then original us, of course um and twitter uh depends on what, of washington.org yeah that makes sense that would be crazy to name it something else <laughs> um Right. Uh, of course, original motto dot us is the pro- motto project, which we do tweet at original underscore motto. Uh, secular yakking is secular dot com. And I do tweet at secular yakking. That's with two K's, by the way. And that's uh, that's pretty much it. Those are my main gigs. I'll tell you what, man, if nothing else, I really hope to see you in February. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll be one of the ones wearing all black. <laughs> yeah, that'll be cool. I will definitely uh, make the trip down there. I just got back from Olympia yesterday. That oh, was fun. The other thing that you're doing, uh, oh, yeah, you're yeah. a uh, humanist celebrant. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, this year I did the uh, state invocation at uh, the, the Capitol. Yeah, that was fun. I quoted Jefferson because it was Jefferson's birthday when I did it. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'll have to dig up that. Uh, invocation. I, I'm pretty sure it's on a YouTube somewhere. Very cool. And I think we played the one you did on Whidbey Island. Yeah. Oak Harbor. God, that was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> and then I did Marysville. And then I did one in Clark County. So I've done four. Oh, very nice. And uh, weddings? Yeah, I still do weddings. Um, it's not, it never was my main gig. I, I like doing them. And whenever they come up, I do them. So. Uh, humanist weddings, same-sex marriages, uh, pretty much non-religious stuff. I do yeah, one a month, maybe. Okay. So nice. Like I said, not my main gig. It's it's because I like doing them, and you know, it gives me a little extra money in my pocket. Cool. But yeah, that's yeah, I'd never do it. So <laughs> good on you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you what, it's nerve-wracking the first time. It really is. I've officiated it, six. Holy shit! Uh, oh, I mean. I mean that is kind of like taking what you were going to do and rebranding it. I had a a college course on weddings and funerals. It was one of the, the the year of preaching class was split into uh, for the the three academic quarters. Um, One was on preaching normal sermons. One was on those, uh, you know, special ceremonies. And then one was on uh, evangelistic preaching. Mm. And so, yeah, I've, I've had the actual official training and in, in, uh, doing weddings and, and funerals. Wow, that would have been nice. Mine was <laughs> sort of trial by fire. The the big th- takeaway from it is if you screw up somebody's wedding, they will hate you forever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So um, don't be a dick. Yeah, absolutely not. Don't try to make any points for whatever cause you're fighting for. Right. And you'll be fine. <laughs> and don't screw up their name. 
I have that shit written down. I have done that. So it was a very relaxed ceremony. It was really nice. It was out in the woods. We were, they were camping. And the bride's name was Emily. And it came out enemy. <laughs> <laughs> which, which luckily, it was kind of a Batman-themed wedding, which it kind of worked in accidentally. So it was, it was everybody just kind of cracked up because it was funny at the time. It's <laughs> so. so awesome. So, oh, crap. I cannot believe I just said enemy. <laughs> It's written down, Emily. No, it says, oh, please don't let me say that again. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so I'm on, I don't know how many weddings, probably around 20. I've done about 20 by now. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> you can keep that noise. Well, it, like I said, it's it's fun, but it's nerve wracking because everybody's looking at you and you do 90% of the talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, And for someone who's not used to being up in front of people and technically i have severe stage fright it's a really weird place for me to be it's very strange yeah everybody's everybody is like i cannot believe you do that you couldn't even talk on the phone six months ago so well <laughs> now what i was, do this what was weird for me was then you know getting married yeah planning a wedding you're spending 99 percent of the time planning everything else right and it's crazy to think that all of the thought and effort on the, you know, the main, supposed main people involved is all of the details around the actual ceremony that they usually don't think about. Right. And just leave it up to somebody else. Right. Yeah, I get that quite a bit. It's it's crazy. Yeah. Well, I, I, I write a script up and I have that completely approved by the, the couple beforehand. So there's no mm -hmm. surprises. They know exactly what's going to be in their ceremony. So... They're part of the planning process because there's all questions and, you know, there's back and forth for a few weeks to make sure we have everything right. So that but actually yeah, sounds you, good. Yeah. Um, you know, I read uh, a book by Corliss Lamont, which was how I learned how to do weddings. Right? He was a humanist uh, president emeritus for many, many years. So if you, uh, he's, he's a uh, socialist philosopher. Uh, he was uh, an AHA guy for a long, long time. I suggest people look into his stuff if you're into that sort of thing. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, Robert, thank you very much for joining us again. Oh, thanks for having me. Uh, it, was, it was nice actually getting to talk to you on the podcast this time. Yeah. <laughs> Since I missed the last one. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Certainly nice to talk to you. And for our listeners, we will be back next week uh, with news and we will be recording live hangouts on air on Monday, January 4th. At wow. six thirty Mountain, uh, you'll Crazy. be able to find the the links on the uh, on Facebook and Twitter, and YouTube. Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find show notes and contact information at atheistnomads.com. Follow us on Twitter at Atheist Nomads and like us on Facebook at facebook.com/slash Atheist Nomads. Please subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcatcher of choice. And while you're there, feel free to leave us a review. The music is courtesy of Sturdy Fred. Until next time, this has been The Atheist Nomads.